All right, folks, your first key to a winning pitch, I want you to hold your pen in the air, please. Please hold your pen in the air, nice and high. Let's see it. Now, I want you to put it behind your ear. Humor me. There we go. Beautiful. That looks lovely. Yes, that is an antenna, and it is tuned into one frequency and one frequency only, WIIFM. What's in it for me? The biggest mistake that we make in pitching is going in there and talking all about ourselves. Imagine going on a first date, and immediately you say, look, I just want you to know that I'm incredibly smart. I dress amazing. Well, you can see that. Oh, and I'm incredible in bed. <laughs> I have testimonials. Oh, yeah. Now, the reason that is so outrageous is because everybody knows what do you do in a first date? You get to know one another, right? Listening is more important than speaking. So why do we do it in business? And here's the reason we do it. Those pesky prospects of ours, they trap us with a question. And the question they trap us with is, tell me what you can do for me. Do not fall for the trap. It is a trap. You see, if you're anything like me, you have a vast array of products and services. And so if you're just going to start talking, what is the chances that you're going to talk about what they're interested in? It's like Russian roulette. You might get it right, but you're more likely to kill the deal. So instead, I like a nice open-ended question, one that sounds something like this. Let's thank you so much for the opportunity to share that with you. But before I do, what I'd like to understand is, what is it that you want to accomplish is one possibility, but even better, what is it that, what challenge are you currently facing? What challenges are you currently facing? Now, I particularly like the word challenge, because here's the thing. Nobody ever says, my life and business are brilliant. Now let me pay you to change it, right? People are twice as motivated to reduce pain as to increase pleasure. That comes straight out of behavioral economics. So if we start talking immediately about solutions and all the great things we're going to do, they're like, yeah, but I'm not, I'm not motivated, right? So if you get them, it sounds a little bit sadistic, but if you can get them into a pain state up front where they're feeling the pain of that problem, they are going to be much more receptive to hearing about your solution. Look, it's like going to a doctor, and you've got a headache, and the doctor says, all right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take out your liver. And you're like, doc, but hold on a second. He's like, shh, shh. We did this for a chap last week, and he is doing amazingly. <laughs> Before we do the prescription, we've got to do the diagnosis. As the great American philosopher Jane Fonda said, it is more important to be interested then interesting, when it comes to sales, she who listens best wins.